So since we've had, uh, unfortunately, a large, uh, large, number of, uh, large number of funerals, one of the, uh, one of the bright spots uh, has been that uh, I have been doing <clears throat> quite a bit of uh, premarital counseling because we have, uh, uh, at least from July on to uh, the beginning of October, we have seven weddings on the books. So that's a good thing. That's a positive thing. We have uh, quite a few uh, baptisms on the books too. So those are happy and those are, those are good things. Uh, so I thought that today I would talk a little bit about marriage because I have required that everybody or every couple that wants to, uh, that wants to get married, at least in this church, that they have to go through a premarital counseling session. And they all have the same reaction at the beginning, which would be the same reaction I would have had in my 20s, is, and especially the guy, I don't want to have any part of that, all right? I don't need you telling me how to run my life, you know, you don't know who I am, we're in love, it's all good, I don't need to talk to anybody, and especially don't need to talk to a priest, all right? So, but what happens, by the time we get to the end of it, at least the guy is, all right, that wasn't painful. And the, uh, and the Nifi, the, uh, the bride, she's like, okay. She says, I learned a few more things. So the archdiocese has taken a bit of a different approach. The traditional approach is to figure out whether or not you should get married. Okay, that has failed miserably because... With that approach, the couple, just like I was when, uh, when Bezitetta and I were, were dating and we're going to get married, we didn't really care what anybody thought. We were going to get married. So if you ain't going to marry us in the church, we'll find a tree somewhere and we'll sit under the tree and we'll get married. All right? This is all before priesthood, obviously. That's why I can tell all these stories, right? right? Those, those that are ordained right from the beginning, they got no stories. We've got tons of stories, or at least I do. And so... The archdiocese had to take a look at this and say, no young couple is going to take instruction like that because they'll elope or they'll do whatever. So they took a different approach, and this approach has worked very, very well. The approach is you're going to get married regardless of what anybody says. All right? But maybe what we can do is present some of the scenarios that may get us in trouble or may get you in trouble, I should say, all right? And the way that this particular, and the professor at the seminary who wrote this, Dr. Philip Mamalakis, is the marriage counselor for the priests of the archdiocese. Now, he's been married for almost 30 years. He's got a five or six kids, so he knows a little bit something about marriage, and he is a licensed marriage therapist and counselor. So he took this different approach, and so... He gave us that book after seminary, and I took a look at it, and I said, you know what? This actually is something that I could have used, because what he stresses there is what is the reality of most of our parishes, at least, at least east of St. Louis, let's say, is that, normally speaking, someone with a Greek background is marrying somebody of a non-Greek background. Forget about the Orthodox thing. It is not the orthodox thing that gets couples in trouble. It is the cultural dynamics. All right. Terry was introduced to a few of those cultural dynamics, so I'm going to have to apologize in advance. My mom's watching here. So here we go again. I'm in trouble. But when we were two different, we were two different cultures. I mean, we were, you know, we were yelling at one another, then we love one another, and they're going back and forth. There's constantly drama. If there's not drama in the house, don't worry, we'll create some drama. It'll be great, all right? She did not come from that kind of environment. It was a little bit more, I don't want to say stable, but it was a very orderly type. So when she came over for the first time, and there's my uncle screaming at my dad, and my dad screaming at my uncle, she's like, they're going to kill one another. But in reality, you know, that's just how we express ourselves. So this premarital course, this premarital counseling, is to introduce some of those factors. Another thing that's important, too, is that they understand the factors that can get in the way of their marriage. The Orthodox Church believes that the purpose of marriage is the salvation of one another. 
Not to procreate, not to have kids. If they have kids, that's a blessing, that's wonderful. But that is not the primary purpose of marriage for an Orthodox Christian. It is to be there to save one another. That means to be able to look at one another. There will be plenty of obstacles along the way that will keep them from doing this. The number one thing that will keep them from doing this, unfortunately, in a lot of Greek, a lot of Greek culture, is the family. Because the family likes to intrude on your business. So after we got married, when we sat down at, you know, for dinner on Sunday or something like this, my dad would be, hey, how much did you pay for the car? What's the insurance rate? Hey, I saw that you're, you're looking at a house. How much is the house worth? How much did you pay for gas? What is, uh, you know, are you, what's the check numbers? Where are you banking? And I'm just rattling this stuff off. I'm just telling him everything. So we get home, and Presidenta says, what are you doing? Why are you giving out personal information? I'm like, that's not personal information. That's just what, that's what we've always done. She says, no. She says, we're a married couple now. That is our private information. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. All right. So, so, we had, so, I had to, so I had to learn that. The course, I don't want to say the course, but the sessions bring up things like that. Bring up things like how do we deal with finances? How do we deal in, with ourselves from an intimate nature? You know, we don't get into details, of course. All right. How do we deal with parenting? Many times in these discussions, there is a parenting, I don't want to say conflict, but there is a parenting difference. Some of them want to parent in one way, and the others are parenting from what they learned in another way. And this discussion, this counseling session brings up at least the conversation. So the point of the premarital counseling sessions is not to decide whether or not this couple should get married. The purpose is so they can discover each other a little bit deeper. Yeah, you know, America's in love with love, you know. Oh, we love each other and it's all going to work out and blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm too military for all this. Okay. So, but in the reality, many times love without deep understanding of who each other are can cause issues and problems. We do have divorces and they're unfortunate because normally speaking, by the time the couple comes to the church, to look for premarital counseling, they're already dead. Dead, I mean spiritually dead. So they don't want to have anything to do with one another. That's another purpose of the premarital counseling is to get them to recognize some of these obstacles that are going to come up and to be prepared for how to deal with them. So I just the reason I wanted to talk at least about that premarital counseling session is because I know that some of, you know, I'm sure, that some of the couples have come home and the parents have said, premarital counseling. So now I want to be able to explain to you and to you that's out there why I have this as a requirement because I've seen it or I've seen the positive results that come out of it.